Hello, I'm Sharon Beckstrom, a proud alumni of the University of Minnesota and an active member of the Southwest Florida Alumni Chapter. Mini College has been a long-standing tradition in Naples, Florida, and we're excited to be able to invite alumni from around the world to join us this year, highlighting the amazing University of Minnesota staff. I'm delighted this year that our keynote speaker, Julie Manning, will be sharing her information about Title IX and 50 years in women's gopher athletics. In fact, Title IX is a federal civil rights law, the educational amendments of 1972. It applies to both students and staff. It prohibits sex-based discrimination in any school or program that receives federal funds. All programs and activities must operate in a non-discriminatory manner and not discriminate based on sex, including sexual orientation and gender identity. Title IX includes recruitment and admittance to schools and programs, single sex education, career and course counseling, as well as other types of counseling, classroom materials and interaction, dress codes, pregnancy parenting, sex discrimination and employment pay and promotions for staff. It is a violation of Title IX to retaliate or discriminate against a person for reporting any violation of Title IX. Over the last 50 years, I have seen Title IX change and expand opportunities for both girls and boys in many different ways. Looking back, we've come a long way. Recruitment and admissions to schools and programs was a major issue in 1972, when professional schools such as law, business, or medicine usually restricted the number of women they admitted to a class, usually to less than five or 10, if they admitted women at all. This included the University of Minnesota. Now, some professional schools have more women than men. K-12 schools had programs which only admitted girls or only admitted boys. It was common that girls were required to take home ec courses and no boys were allowed, and boys were required to take shop and trade related courses, no girls allowed. Now students can choose the courses based on their own interest. Athletics includes number of teams, funding, support, facilities, and pay for coaches and staff. Our keynote speaker, Julie Manning, will be talking about this, the gains and challenges in women's athletics. Career counseling must be non-discriminatory. Taking the necessary prerequisites in middle and high school are essential to prepare students for a wide variety of careers, especially in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Prior to Title IX, girls were not encouraged and often discouraged from taking the harder courses because they would need them as wives and mothers. Counselors today are proactive in encouraging both girls and boys equally to reach their full potential. Classroom materials should show both boys and girls in a variety of careers and roles. Those of us who are old enough to remember when all of our books, the doctors and the bosses were all men, all the parenting was done by the mother. Now, uh, my great grandson's books include boys and girls in a variety of roles and careers. Dress is important. Prior to Title IX, girls in K-12 schools were usually required to wear skirts or dresses, even in Minnesota with our cold winters. Dresses also limited the amount of physical activity girls could participate and what athletics they could participate in without showing their underwear. Now students can dress appropriately for all activities. Students are protected from discrimination based on pregnancy, parenting, or sexual orientation. 
Prior to Title IX, girls who became pregnant before high school graduation were not allowed to continue in school. A few progressive schools did have provide home schooling for pregnant girls. But for most girls, almost all, it meant the end to their education without a high school degree. Now some schools even provide childcare so that girls can continue their education, graduate, and look at a variety of careers. Sexual harassment and assault of both students or staff are covered under Title IX. Institutions must develop a system of reporting, investigating, and determining punishment for sexual harassment and assault. For staff, sex discrimination is prohibited in employment, pay, and promotions. School districts often pay male teachers more than women, as one superintendent told me. He has a family to support. Now, pay must be equal for both sexes. It's a violation of Title IX to retaliate or discriminate against anyone for reporting a violation of Title IX. The language in the law is very specific. No recipient or other person may intimidate, threaten, coerce, or discriminate against any individual for the purpose of interfering with any right or privilege secured by Title IX or its implementing regulation, or because an individual has made a report or complaint, testified, assisted or participated, or refused to participate in a proceeding under Title IX. Much has changed since Title IX was passed, but some changes have taken decades. Some are still a work in progress. I hope you will take this opportunity to join us at the Mini College and hear about Title IX in Gopher Women's Athletics from Julie Manning. I look forward to hearing her and all the other amazing speakers. Thank you.